being able to run a powerful local model like DeepSeek R1 and just squish it down and run it entirely offline and on your own computer safely and guaranteed to be uh, not communicating with anyone else? Well, that's quantization, the squishing part. And we did that with the, the files run Hugging Face in a range of quants we'll talk about. And I think it is the smallest working model for DeepSeek R1 on a PC with 128 gigs of memory and 24 gigs of VRAM. So you could run that. And that's, I think, the smallest in the world and the best for now. But don't take my word for it. You can download the files we created on Hugging Face and try it yourself. I think that's pretty exciting. The idea here is that we use an insanely powerful computer to take the huge model and quantize it down to something that runs on more normal computers. And yeah, okay, 128 gigs and 24 gigs of VRAM, it's kind of a lot. How do we measure how broken we make it when we strip it away so much? That's called perplexity. And there is a standard-ish way to measure the perplexity of these. So what system are we using for this? It's a dual Xeon 6980p configured with fast Keoxia CD8P storage. This system is the absolute top of the stack and it is perfect for this project of squishing these giant models down into something you can run on something more modest. If you've been following this project for the last several months on the forum, it, that's what we've been working on and that's how we've been doing our work for this quantization to shrink it, make it run on other stuff. The 6980p with a dual socket configuration also has a peak memory bandwidth approaching 1.7 terabytes per second and so that makes this platform just perfect these really are the best xeons intel has done in 10 years and it doesn't get any better than the 6980p i want to show you this project and our setup on the giga computing r284 a91 and i want you to understand why i think this is such a good thing for ordinary folks to be able to take a giant model like DeepSeek, which is normally 600 billion parameters requires 600 gigabytes of room to move around and we can get it running in just 128 gigs but uh yeah stay a while and listen what we're talking about here is taking our expensive monster hardware and taking the ai models on the internet that you can download and shrinking them to run on lesser hardware that's what everybody's doing. Everybody's in the quant game. And hopefully keeping the perplexity low enough to preserve how they function even though they've been shrunk, which you know keeps them useful. When you chat with an AI model online, any AI model, whether that's ChatGPT or Claude or Gemini or DeepSeek or anything, there is always someone else in the room monitoring and logging everything you type in and everything that is spit back to you from the AI. When you run a model like this that you download from the internet, when you download from Hugging Face on your own hardware, however, it's running on your own hardware and it's just you and the AI. There's no one else. It's possible that the AI, I suppose, could have been programmed to like whisper sweet nothings in your ear and lie to you and like try to manipulate you, but it's not reporting on what you talk about to anyone else, nor is it getting new orders or new programming as time goes on. It's isolated. That's way more private and that's way safer. Arguably, DeepSeek is one of the best models out there that anyone can just download and run. The trouble is, you need a lot of hardware to run DeepSeek as it was released. So let's go to the basement and take a closer look at our Giga Computing chassis, the platform, and what we've got set up there. The thing I like about Gigabyte is they don't nickel and dime you. Everything you need for a successful deployment is in here. Rails, accessories, heatsink number one, heatsink number two, and then the server underneath there. It's glorious. Look at this. This is obviously designed for those insane wattage processors. Because remember the 6980p, 500 watts. Intel's pulling no punches here with what they're doing. And it really, it's the best Xeons they've done in a decade. Gigabyte, mini display port to VGA. Because if you have to have VGA, there it is. But they give you the accessory. The internals are great. Look at all the PCIe slots. Plus you've got Operating system boot drive options here. You've also got dual internal M.2 with the heatsink cooling hardware pre-installed. You get your OCP3 slots here, your out of band management card pre-installed. It's great, it's a great, great platform. It's your air baffle, it's baffling. So the front configuration here, you can support up to 42 NVMe devices in the E3 form factor. But if you'll notice, we've got some of these double height, double width, Whatever what you want to call them, E3 slots. And these are really designed for CXL devices and they're labeled CXL. And they also lock. 
So you have to go through a little bit of a uh, release mechanism here because uh, CXL devices, not exactly hot plug, they're memory devices. We've got some smart modular CXL devices we're gonna install in this a little bit later and run some benchmarks, but I've also got plenty of normal E3 slots, plus the storage at the back, plus everything else, that we're gonna put some Keoxia storage in in just a moment. Now, because we have the option of so much PCIe at the front of the chassis, Gigabyte also opts for modularity. And so we've got our PCIe Gen 5 by 16 slot, which is, you know, on the bracket at the back. But for expansion slot things like this, you get a PCB and the PCB connects to an MCIO connector. So if you want to use, say, an MCIO connector and get another X16 slot, you can take two of your X8 MCIO connectors and route them to the back with the appropriate PCB. So we've got a lot of room here for expansion. Two full height half length slots plus one half height full length slot. I love this kind of chassis design because it gives you, the system architect, the flexibility to do whatever it is that you want to do. If this is too much CXL or, or PCIe connectivity at the front of the chassis, you can use your MCIO headers and reroute those PCIe lanes to the back of the chassis. You don't need a different motherboard, you don't need a different SKU, you can just say, hey, I'm going to mount another X16 slot back here, I'm going to have two X16 slots or three X16 slots, and you give up some of your PCIe or CXL connectivity at the front of the chassis, but you'll be able to run those lanes at the rear of the chassis for whatever peripherals you want. Look look at the CPU. Look, Just look at this. This absolute unit of a CPU. This is 7529, or socket 7529, uh, 7529, LGA 7529. That is an ungodly number of pins. This is just absolute insanity. 12 memory channels per socket, two sockets, 24 DIMMs in this thing. This is getting pretty exciting. I've got my CPUs and my RAM installed, and now it's time for our Keoxia CD8P storage. I really like what Giga Computing has done here with the toolless design. It's clever. And one of the big improvements with E3 and E1 drives is built-in LEDs. So when I close this, the LEDs that are on this are not from the backplane, they're from the drive themselves. And it turns out that's a better source of truth. We're gonna be using our LR Link dual 100 gigabit. I reviewed this separately. It's an Intel adapter, basically. So our Intel NIC and our Intel platform with its nice copper heatsink and uh, full, you know, full OCP3 bandwidth and connectivity. So you can move things at a ridiculous speed, which is very nice. I'm literally putting this system together to understand more about AI work and how that works from a CPU workload context. GPUs often overshadow the compute in the AI space in the conversation, but CPUs can be hugely important for these kinds of projects. These are the flagship Intel 6980P processors, 128 cores, 256 threads per CPU. There's 12 memory channels here, DDR5, MR8, 8800, and these chips are designed so that they won't bottleneck even as we approach more than 800 gigabytes per second of memory socket bandwidth. So two sockets, double that. And as you can see from the front of our chassis, the A91 supports up to 16 CXL devices. Be sure to check out the videos that we did on the smart modular CXL devices. Those are a lot of fun. You can expand the system memory through PCIe. We've got a lot more CXL content coming, more smart modular CXL adapters, including their eight lane 128 gig variants that use an E3 connection. If you need crazy amounts of memory capacity, you can expand with this chassis with those modules. The double width E3 slots are called E3 2T. So even with all these PCIe lanes at the front of the chassis, we still have 32 Gen 5 lanes available for expansion cards or OCP NICs. Now you might remember our Intel 6980P benchmarks from late last year when these CPUs launched. But on this modern platform from Giga Computing, many of those same benchmarks show significant improvement from 4 to 8% faster as Xeon 6 has matured. So software updates, platform updates, this motherboard's a little bit better than Intel's reference platform, so it's pretty awesome. So now, using that machine, there's many LLMs coming out each month, each of which has a variety of quantizations available for download that randos like us have put together. How do you know which quantization is good? I mean, the world has sort of paused for a second with the release of DeepSeek R1, and it's tough to run it in its full form. I feel like 120 gigs of RAM and 24 gigs of VRAM is well within enthusiast reach, but you might need more than 10 times that to run a model like DeepSeek the way that it was actually released, because it's you know, 600, 700 gigabytes. And then come the quantizations. 
from other folks, randos, like I said, mostly, uh, I mean, okay, some of them are venture capital companies or companies that are, you know, hanging their shingle out there to try to offer these kind of quantization services. But what's the difference between these models, you know, from Bartowski or Unsloth or models from Ubergarm? That's our guy and others. What, uh, what are all these weird names like FP8, BF16, Q8 underscore zero, Q4, K underscore M, I3, KS? What, what, is, what does that even mean? And the format of the quantization, you know, GGUF is usually what we would use, but how does that compare to EXL3, AWQ, and other model formats? So, Ubergarm. Ubergarm on our forum did a bunch of experiments, and that's what we've been working on on this system. The focus has been on answering the question of how well the various quantizations of DeepSeq R1-0528 perform in terms of general, you know, generation of quality, uh, like how well do they perform relative to the real one? And so there's two experiments that we need to do. First, compare the quants. Uh, we use the 6980P to make 11 almost identical quants and we varied the attention and shared expert tensors to between four and eight bits per weight. Each one is over 350 gigabytes. For each of these, the key is, uh, you know, key thing is to measure the perplexity and the KLD stats. These are typically what you see in academic papers you might read on AR, uh, XIV, and stand, uh, they're standard metrics for uh, academic comparison. Perplexity is a measure of how likely the model is to do a good job predicting the next token. Lower perplexity is better, and if we can reduce the size of the model without impacting the perplexity too much, then the model will work the same or similarly, but be much smaller and run on much less hardware. KLD measures how much the quantized LLM outputs differ from the original full model given the same input. So the lower the KLD is, the, the better the outputs are in that they don't differ from the original model. The original R1-0528 model weights are trained and released in the FP8 data type. That's one byte per weight. This is itself is a bit of a departure from how things had been before DeepSeek sort of disrupted thing, and, and that's what attracted a researcher's attention early on with, with DeepSeek. I mean, up until then, the good models were all using 16 bits, two bytes, and even at one byte per weight, that's a footprint of around 700 gigabytes. So only newer GPUs like the 4090 and newer actually have this kind of native FP8 data type support. So having native hardware support means that you can you know, double the performance over FP16 for the same unit compute. And a lot of the tools for working on these expect to help you fine tune and, and adjust the model in FP16 format. And so sometimes you see DeepSeq converted to FP16, but it's not really natively FP16. So when you see DeepSeq benchmarked in FP16 mode, it's because they used a tool to adjust it or fine tune it. Now FP8 and for hardware that supports it, Q8 underscore zero is essentially what the model creators intended DeepSeq to be used at. And that, you know, uh, hardware is meant to support FP8 natively. and get the doubling of speed from FP16. So the FP8 performance on hardware that supports it is used as the baseline as you know for the model and represents the full quality of what DeepSeq has to offer in the comparison I'm about to show you. This of course varies from model to model. Some models are still native FP16. It, it all just, it depends. The second major thing to publish a collection of R1-528 quants for public testing is that Ubergarm used the above, you know, used some experiments to inform the decision on how to quantize and release a section of the model at a higher quality for hugging face for people to download and, and run at home. That's what's pinned in the discussion on level the level one forums, and that's what you can download are these various quantizations. There are about four models available now at Ubergarm slash DeepSeek R1 528 GGUF1, which require IKLama.cpp, the Llama fork, in order to run, because the maintainer of IKLama.cpp, iKrakow, is a contributor and author of many of the important features and quantization used in the mainline Llama.cpp and Olama and LM Studio. He now maintains his own fork with the latest and greatest quants available for researchers and home users, meaning that Llama will support these quantizations natively and try to use hardware to speed them up. The quants vary in size and quality, and the breakpoints are for common VRAM and system RAM combinations. Um, and so let's take a look at a graph. Ubergarm then compared perplexity and KLD for each of the models, and that's what's in our graph here. We are not the only ones working on finding ways to get the giant models to run on much less giant hardware, but it is handy to have giant hardware to be able to do that. 
The perplex perplexity graph shows that both the IQ5KS is able to maintain low perplexity while being smaller in size. The IQ5KS is exclusive to IKLama.cpp currently and strictly a strict upgrade for what would be the IQ5 underscore XS that existed in mainline Llama.cpp, which, you know, it, it, it doesn't right now. The slightly smaller IQ4 reduces the size even more with a slight decrease uh, in quality because the perplexity goes up as compared with the baseline. The IQ4KS is experimental and based on the QTIP paper similar to the new EXL3 quantization type. So it might be one of the best in the future and uh, after software optimizations are added to improve speed and performance. The best performing quant that we have for the size available in the mainline Llama.cpp uh, Olama LM Studio is probably the Q5 underscore K. The KLD graph is pretty ugly, but the delta P here is showing how much quantized model outputs differ from the original baseline. On average, the 99th percentile and an absolute max here. Uh, here is, again, IQ5KS has a low overall difference from the full Q8 underscore zero, and not shown Q8 still has the you know Q4 for the other parts as it would take forever to fill up. You know, fill up. <laughs> it would, it, we skipped a couple steps here, but uh, to compare with Q8. But uh, if we want to compare the perplexity of native pure deep seek to the different models, we can still see that on this graph. This chart compares perplexity on the models available for download um, on Hugging Face with the pure reference deep seek model. Yes, the perplexity is way higher on the IQ1 underscore S, but this is actually shockingly good perplexity given that the model is so much smaller. This is the one that should be usable even if you only have 128 gigs of memory and 24 gigs of VRAM. And I think this is the best one bit version of DeepSeek available. Again, the KLD values agree with the perplexity showing that the trend of more bits per weight performing better than lower bits uh, per weight in the quantizations here. So basically the more you strip away, the, the worse it gets, but it's not always obvious. IQ3, uh, K underscore four performance of the pure versus the pure Q4 underscore zero, it's about 50 gigs smaller, but the performance is really similar. The best thing here though, in my opinion, is that the IQ4 KSR4 maintains performance similar to the full Q8 model from DeepSeek, the original release, but it's half the size. This is kind of a big deal. This one should probably be good for larger 300 and you know, 84 gigs of memory plus a good GPU or two and still maintain the best quality and speed compared to the full fat Q8 model. The thing is, you probably could run it twice as fast. This is interesting. And uh, there's another interesting thread on Reddit, the Great Quant Wars of 2025. If this sounds interesting and you want to follow this and take a look at it a little bit more, it's really more well suited to conversation on the forum than me trying to distill it down into a video. Ubergarm also want, uh, wrote this quant cooking guide. And so if you have some insane hardware you want to throw at quant cooking, check out this guide for you to be able to cook your own quants on this platform. Again, big thanks to Giga Computing and Keoxia and Intel for providing hardware for this long running experiment. It's, uh, it's been interesting and I've also learned a lot from working on this. So if you want to support our work, there's Patreon, Floatplane, store.level1tax.com. Uh, if you got any surplus hardware you can throw our way and it's like, ah, we can use some more eight terabyte or 16 terabyte SSDs. There's all sorts of fun stuff that we're cooking up with this platform from Giga Computing. But this is what we've got so far. And I was really excited by this because even though the perplexity is kind of high on that one bit model, it seems like it's lower than other one bit versions of DeepSeek. And you could run it on relatively modest hardware. You should check it out. And what is level one? This has been a quick look at this madness, this madness and the Giga Computing you know, R284 chassis. Uh, I'm Wendellis Level 1, I'm signing out. If you have any questions, uh, hit us up in the Level 1 forums. I'm signing out and I'll see you there.